Hi, my name's Jamie Hughes. I'm here today at Tunnel Barn Farm, and I'd like to run you through how I approach a, a typical uh, commercial snake lake during the autumn and winter months. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to run you through how I plumb up. I find it really important that I have to be really, really accurate with my plumbing up in order to be fishing in the right place and to be able to show the bites up as much as they can. Fish are notoriously shy in the winter, so I need to be plumbed up to make sure my bites show up as quickly as they're happening. What I'm going to do first, I'm just going to plumb up the centre of the canal. What I've got there today, I've probably got around four foot down the middle in this particular peg. And this is going to be an area that I feed and fish later on in the match. What we're going to be doing today, we're going to be fishing or feeding in three areas of the peg. Because I'm finding four foot down the middle, I'm going to be fishing four foot down the middle, then I'm going to find myself three foot, and I'm going to find myself two foot as well. Yeah, regardless of what features I'm fishing against, it's the depths that are important. That's the areas of the peg that I want to find, and it's where I'm going to focus on with, um, with my feed. I'm going to fish other areas, but I'll come into that later. So to begin with, I'm going to plumb up in the center of the canal. This is generally the area where you've got a, a slope on the inside, a slope on the far side, and a nice flat in the middle. It's generally the case in most canals that we fish. In this area, it's generally where all the silt congregates. It's where it builds up. Obviously, the silt can't settle on a slope, so it settles down the middle of the canal. So it, it's a much softer bottom whenever you're fishing in this area. Because of this, I have to plumb up a little bit more carefully. So what I've got there, if you'll see as I drop it in, I plumbed up just so I can see the body of my float. This is really important. It's a, a big mistake that I see a lot during my coaching is that people plumb up right to the bristle of the float, thinking it needs to be plumbed up in the same way as the float shotted, as low as possible. This isn't necessarily right. So what I'm after is by plumbing up and giving myself probably an inch allowance if I drop it, I've got a nice little squared area there that's the same depth. And as I say, I'm giving myself an inch allowance. What that inch of allowance in depth does, it allows my float to move about. If we see, it's probably got 10 inches square that it can move about on, where it's not interfering with my bait. My bait's still gonna stay still on the bottom. Whereas if I plumb up to ultimate dead depth, if I plumb up so it's a pimple, such as that, as soon as my float moves, it's gonna move my bait. Because my float's obviously not going to sink, but it's going to move along and it's going to move my bait and in turn make it look unnatural. That's going to happen by a bit of wind, me moving my pole, whatever. There's always something that's going to interfere with your float. There's no such thing as a perfectly still day. So by having that little bit of allowance, it's going to help me maintain a still bait, which is vitally important when fishing for these big F1s during the winter. That's the main reason I'm going to give them that little bit of allowance. So that's my first area of the canal down the centre. I'm quite happy with that. I've got a nice little area there right at the end of my pole. I, I can't fish any further if I wanted to without putting a section on and I'm right in line with a nice big far bank marker that's really clear. So I've got myself a nice space that I can feed and fish over for later on. The next area I'm going to uh, plumb up, I'm going to try and find myself three foot. I'm not going to look at specific features or anything like that. I like to look at areas that I can see my float in best. So I've got a few nice dark patches I'm going to plumb up first and see what's going on. But say three foot to the next area I want to find. And then after that, two foot. It gives me three different areas of my peg that hopefully I'm going to find the fish on. Every, every day they tend to feed in one area better than the other, depending on weather conditions and how they feed and all that sort of stuff. So by covering all three depths, hopefully I'll be able to find as quickly as possible which area they want, the fish want to feed in on the, on the particular day. So I'm just going to whiz him back and we're going to stick next rig on. What I will mention is I tend to only use one size of plummet whenever I'm plumbing up on these sort of snake lakes. I'm after a nice, fairly heavy, I tend to use a 20 gram. Anything more than that can sink in the silt a little bit too much down the middle. But a 20 gram gives me enough weight to drop and feel what's going on, see how soft the bottom is. But it's also, what's really important is that I have a big base on my plummet. Yeah, that comes into this next line now. When I'm plumbing up on a gradient, the larger the base on my plummet, the better my plummet's gonna to stick to the bottom. If I have a tiny base on my plummet, then it'll very easily roll because I'm plumbing on a gradient. And it gives me, it makes it really hard for me to have a clear understanding of how the bottom is. Whereas a bit of a bigger base on my plummet, it'll stick a little bit more to the bottom, allowing me to feel what's going on in the, the area that I choose to fish. So this is my next rig, this is set at, at three foot. So the track's four foot, so I'm just gonna adjust up that slope into three foot of water. see what's going on. What I've actually done, 
I've actually pre-plumbed this just to see what's happening. And the area that I'm finding three foot, it's ideal to be honest, it's probably a metre off the far bank rushes, which is perfect. It gives me another area to move back to. And what I've done, I've got, again, I've got a nice far bank marker lined up and I'm just going to lower my rig in just until I can see my body. See, it's literally two or three inches further back or closer towards me, the depth's always going to alter. So I want to find a nice little, little patch like that there, where again, I'm just seeing the body of my float, where I'm not going to be, I'm not too low, I'm not right down to my bristles if I was a bit shorter. I can move up just so I can see that body. And to me, that's the perfect area. The, the area that I get to fish in three foot, because I'm on a slope, is much smaller and it has to be much more accurate than that down the middle. I have such a small area that I'm presenting my bait right. I need to make sure it's in the right place all the time. So in this case, I've got a far bank marker ready and I've actually put some tape on my pole. So as long as I'm holding that tape in exactly the same place all the time, so I've, I've, in this case, I've used tape. You could use either the graphics on your pole or ideally a join. A join's a really good thing to use if it matches up with the area you're fishing. But so in this case, as long as I'm just holding that tape in my left hand and I'm sat in the same position, I'm always going to be dropping that right into the, into the correct area where I want to be fishing. So lastly, I'm going to go right to that far bank and find even shallower water again. So the shallowest water can be, it's a bit of a funny one. It's, at this time of year, it's probably still good. We're going to catch a few fish over there. They're going to be happy to be in that and feeding. They're going to readily accept some feed and I'm going to catch some. Once it gets a bit cooler, generally around mid to end of December, this becomes an area that the fish are still in, but they're not happy feeding on um, maggots and pellets, that sort of bait, feeding amounts of them. So that turns into your dobbing line. We're going to come up into that in a minute. But so for today, I think there's a chance we could catch some there feeding. So I'm just going to whiz this out. Just trying to find myself a nice little... Nice little spot. I've got there, probably got six inches left and right that's the same depth. Again, I've, I've got a join on this one. I'm just onto the join of me, my dolly butt extension. So as long as I hold that again in exactly the same position, in line with my far back marker, I know I'm going to be in the perfect place every time. The same on this line, if I were to come literally a couple of inches shorter, it gets, it gets deeper. So I have to make sure uh, I'm right in that exact same place all the time. How I put my rig in is very important as well, but we're going to come into that later. Right, well, that's me three lines plumbed up. I've made sure I'm as accurate as I can possibly be with all of them. I've plumbed up, so I'm still in tight contact with my hook bait, which is vitally important on these days. The fish aren't going to swim off from my bait. I need to see every indication when I'm getting it. But I also need to make sure that my hook bait isn't moving by being plumbed up with a too much of a tighter line. So hopefully I've done everything I possibly can uh, to ensure that I'm being as accurate as I can and I'm going to see what's going on. So hopefully that'll catch me a few more fish.